copies of the minutes from December 9th. Stipulation. If, if the sheathing is removed and there's no insulation found, contractors will be required to put in insulation. I believe where we left that was he was just letting us know that that was coming in the new code. Yeah. We only approved uh, the roofing <coughs> without the insulation stipulation. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I guess. Supposed to be changed the first of the year? No, no, just no. when the new clothes are. Oh, okay. Well, I can change it to the new clothes. We don't know when, yeah. The fee for the hot water heater was dropped. That's exactly it. Remember, there was a $15 fee if you would put the new hot water heater in. There's a permit for that as well. Yeah. Where's the new hot water heater? 
we have the chart. Yeah, I've got it. Right there. Yeah. yeah, I got it too. Okay. So you want to take out contract that will be required? Yes. Until. Until. Until yeah. Until Cold. Yeah. Until required by the. Until it's required by the local. Yeah. Okay. So are we just going to attach the uh, the chart to this? Contractual relationship would be strictly with the town. What that, what the conditions with clerks works uh, typically require is that the applicant pay for it. That way, you don't bear the burden of the cost of uh, of the additional work. He he assists the building inspector, who's got all the regular things he has to do in addition to this. So the idea is just that it's a consultant to the town. And the fees are charged back to the to the project sponsor. Oh, okay, thank you. And he's the additional building inspector, essentially. Essentially, oh. that's correct. And we we've used provisions provisions similar to that in other projects successfully. <coughs> Paragraph four, section M. It's the uh, dealing with the uh, the additional emergency equipment upgrades. Are you familiar with that provision? Yes. Uh, the way it's worded, it says prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, uh, the applicant will provide appropriate <coughs> and reasonable emergency equipment upgrades and training to local fire companies, uh, and it lists a, a number of things. Uh, but my question was. Uh, an annual stipend starting at commencement of the project and running until the first year following the issuance of the first major occupancy permit. Uh, but it's listed as a requirement only prior to the issue, issuance of the certificate of occupancy. Uh, I'm wondering if that should be uh, part of the initial permitting process maybe. I don't know if there's a better way to word that or if it's Tell me the number of that one. That was down, I think. 
M? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And I, I believe that language um, was put in there based on previous discussions with the fire departments and everything. So, but it's certainly checked on that. <coughs> I met with uh, Orville and Jody last Friday, and Jody led me to believe that he had given or was about to give to uh, Warren a bunch of dates that he was free uh, to meet. And uh, I made it clear to Orville that uh, we needed to get he needed to get together with Warren and, and uh, Jody in a meeting so that they could agree on the documentation that's been prepared for them. So uh, I fully expect that meeting to be sometime this month. Yeah, I think that was the on blasting just seems to be best practices it is. for blasting. It, it doesn't have much to do with, with this project or any particular project. It's all how to do blasting. Um, the, uh, the provisions are sort of standard <coughs> provisions that DEC has used whenever, as part of a project, it, there's going to be blasting, but you're absolutely correct. It's mostly used in connection with quarries and things like that. So this, the blasting for this project is just for construction 
and it's just going to be for a you know for a, a specific period of time, and then it's over. So it's a it's a little bit you know overkill, if you will. But we figured it would be better to go with the more lengthy standard provisions that DEC puts together. But they all are best practices. That's right. Okay. Does anybody know whether there actually will be any blasts? Oh yeah, that's covered in the environmental impact statement and the planning statement. Um, you know, it's often when you encounter rock as part of the construction project, you don't really know in advance if you're going to. Um, and I think in this case, because we've done so much uh, soil <coughs> testing and everything on site over the years, really since 1999, we have a really good handle on where the rock is, and, and we're, we're, I'd say, 100% certain that we're gonna have to do some blasting. In fact, when Bel Air uh, was working on the uh, slopes, they had done some blasting too, so it's very common in this area. I'd like to see the notice about the blasting. Uh, if that could be posted somewhere with a phone number available after hours, like maybe, uh, maybe at your office or something, so if people come to try and reach you, they can just, they have a number to call and they know where to, sure. where to go. Fine. It seems very thorough, all the provisions are really very thought out. Yeah, well, uh, because this, the stormwater pollution prevention plan requires you to have like a little box on site where you keep the manuals, we could also put that notice on there and that, that like on the construction trailer and that might make the best sense. Yeah, just, <coughs> they just have a very clear way to contact you if they're, you know, if they're looking for that survey that you offer or uh, to know if they're, you know, you tell them we didn't contact you because you're not in the radius. Yep, just, no uh, A bit about the quarter mile radius, that's standard yes. blasting beyond a quarter mile. There, there are limited effects, I guess. That, that's correct. And the reason why, the other reason why we only see these standard <coughs> is because they've used it for large quarries and other things like that. So, so the type of blasting that we're doing here, which is the just for construction purposes, you know, we felt if it was good enough for a quarry, it should be, you know, good enough for construction, where we're just removing some bedrock as part of the construction project. Um, and again, that provision is, it's in the DEC record. It's actually posted on the DEC website. So beyond a quarter mile, there are limited, I assume you could hear the place. You know, it all depends on where you are and whether there's a direct line as to whether or not you can hear it, but I'm, I'm really just a lawyer, I'm not a noise expert. <laughs> but I, I, I would think that within a quarter mile, um, you would, you know, that, that would be, what they're, what they're trying to make sure is that if, if a blast were to affect somebody's well, you know, that within that quarter mile, you would have a pre-blast survey of the well. So you'd have a before and after. And it would be much easier to tell what had gone wrong. Like where I live in Duanesburg, they blasted to put in I-88 back in the 50s. 
and so that had an effect on some people's wells. Um, so it's that kind of thing they're trying to get a handle on. Um, if the blasting is done according to the, the best practices, it should not have an effect on anything. Uh, but just in case, you know, we want to make sure that people have an, an opportunity to demonstrate that there is a problem and that it was created by this project. John, uh, in terms of noise, Blasting procedures today uh, involve heavy mats, oh, which, which that. have a, you might you might get a thump, but you're not. It's not like you're got 15 sticks of dynamite uh, just going off and creating uh, a substantial substantial bang. Uh, so it's a bucket. It, it's a very muffled sound that results from blasting. I was going to say that um, you have the Atlantic Sea mats going to be used for, you know, to cover excessive flying rock, but they have to muffle the same also. I mean, if they are heavy enough to hold the rock down, they will hold it down there also. Okay. I have a question. <clears throat> are the explosives brought in every day when they're needed? They're not stored on the on the the project property, are they? No, we, we do, uh, we, our firm does work for Dino Nobel, mm -hmm. who just happens to sell the majority of the uh, explosives in the area. And as I understand it, what they do is they have people from that company come in with the explosives that are needed for that day. So they, they manage them, they handle them, and they store them in their alcohol, tobacco, and firearm approved bumpers wherever those are. So, like, uh, I actually got approvals for a bunker over in Pine Plains. Um, so, so they, uh, that's how they do it. Okay. So all the numbers have you in front of them the uh, final statements? The state and the one that uh, yeah. <coughs> You've all had the uh, county planning boards. Reported modifications. Table A. And table B. John, do you feel as though you reviewed enough at this point, or do you need more time? No, I'm looking at the county proposals or suggestions. They also seem to be best practices that they would probably say about any project anywhere in the county. It's, it's all common sense, a lot of it. But it appears that everything that, uh, that they recommended has been accepted by the Art, how do you feel? Now well, I've gone to this paperwork and it seems like we've addressed almost everything even before we got this. I just re it again. So, but uh, I could have overlooked something, but Stuff's been addressed in our own in our own resolution. Uh, I think has also been addressed in our. 
higher resolution. And then, uh, you know, I, I feel we've, we've been through it. DEC has been very well through it. It's just a very, very minor stuff. It's just covered in the... Uh, Cover the the minor things that we're talking about. <coughs> yeah, I do. I mean, maybe going back to uh, section M, maybe a uh, good way to handle it would be a time constraint after the issuance of the permit, since obviously it can't come before the permit. Um, I don't know what a reasonable length of time to get that done would be. You know, as I read through it, the annual stipend starts at the commencement of the project construction, and the other stuff is due before the certificate of occupancy. I think I think that's okay, actually. I just read it. Yeah, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a motion to uh, move the uh, resolution? Yeah, to, uh, I make a motion to accept and to issue a uh, special use permit, approve what we have in the site plan and everything that we have in front of us. I think our 99.9% uh, has got a couple little letters there that have to be changed. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. I don't think anything more that we do is going to change the significance of the project. <coughs> I second the motion. Discussion? Anyone has a discussion? Okay, board member Jordan? Yes. Board member Shiner? Yes. Board member Cow? Yes. Board member Brewer? 